Tonight, live, it's the hottest ticket in country as Kenny Rogers hosts the 18th Annual Country Music Association Awards with over 30 top stars. Y'all don't miss it. This is CBS. Union troubles for Fort Wayne today involving city firefighters, machinists, and police officers. And a local business is hit by a strike. These stories and more next on News 15. Hex announces the fall sale with great savings on name brand items like Lee Jeans, the brand that fits. Choose from men's pre-washed or assorted ladies styles, just $13.88. Save on all ladies jeans, including Braxton and Playmate. In solid or striped denim, straight legs, baggies, and other assorted styles, all on sale for just $13.88. Name brands at great savings. That's Hex's way of saying... W-A-N-E-T-V, the news station. This is News 15 with Liz Berry and Ken Owen. Maureen Ty, Jay Higgins, and the entire News 15 team. Good evening, I'm Ken Owen. And I'm Liz Berry. Members of the Fort Wayne Firefighters Union today informally rejected the city's latest contract proposal. The 250 union members were set to ratify the 1985 contract last week, but the document was pulled off the table by the administration to clear up legal differences. Meanwhile, rank-and-file union members now say even with the legal jar jargon ironed out, the city's proposal is totally unacceptable. We have two reports tonight outlining the contract disputes between the administration and city employees. Last week, it looked as though ratification of the firefighters' contract may be smooth sailing. But rank-and-file union members have since then seemed to have changed their tune. Over the weekend, more than 200 of the union's 230 members signed these petitions, calling the city's contract proposal totally unacceptable. It's very obvious that the membership is not happy with the proposal that the city has proposed to us. Um, I, I will go back and try to get total clarification on the points that have been uh, suggested to me by the membership that should be cleared up. I don't understand why the membership is unclear about these issues. Uh, they should have received our uh, explanation uh, from their uh, representatives. Union officials say members have several concerns, foremost the possibility that working hours may be changed. The city wants the right to just assign work hours at their whim evidently, even though they have indicated that they have no intent to change the work hours of the firefighters right now, and they were also to, to supply us with a letter of intent on that matter. The way the contract is presently proposed, it would give them the right to change the hours weekly if they so desired. The city has to maintain the ability to establish uh, work hours and work weeks. I think it's important to managing the operation and providing the necessary level of service to the community. If we don't have that, that opportunity, it's hard to establish minimum manning levels and effective coverage, which is a concern of the community, that we have enough people on the street uh, at the fire stations who can provide the necessary fire coverage. Firefighters also feel they're getting a bum rap on wages. They've been offered a 7% pay raise as opposed to the more than 9% being offered to the city's police force this year. But money isn't everything. These union members feel the city is trying to buy their rights with pay. Regardless, both sides say they hope to return to the bargaining table this week. And if that's not possible, union officials say they will ask for arbitration. Noreen Lauer, News 15. Members of the Firefighters Union are also saying they'll be supporting another labor struggle in Fort Wayne. The firefighters say they'll be backing the city's largest union, the City Machinists Local 2569 at Tuesday's City Council meeting. The machinists are upset at a city move to contract work for the water and sewer lines to the General Motors site out to private companies. The union claims this is not the first time this has happened. For that reason, they want the city council to draft an ordinance forcing the administration to allow them bids for similar jobs. But Council President Ben Eisbart says the problem shouldn't be in council's hands. If the machinist union want us to act as arbitrators, then I think they're casting us in a whole different role, and it's a role that I frankly don't feel comfortable with because it would be disturbing a contract that they've already worked out themselves in terms of a procedure. I think council uh, plays an oversight role, but certainly does not play a role of opening up the contract and arguing for one side or the other. 
Nevertheless, the machinists say they will be there Tuesday night with the blessing of the firefighters and yet a third city union having problems with the administration. The contract for the Patrolman's Benevolent Association doesn't expire until March, but union officials say they're planning ahead contract talks broke down last week and officials have agreed to go into arbitration. While the PBA has been offered a 9.3 percent increase, they contend the city is trying to buy their rights. The loss of the seniority bidding rights, the loss of protection under the officer's bill of rights, and the flexibility that it would give the chief to uh, change hours at will. Those are the real major concerns. Jones says the PBA will begin sifting through a list of potential arbitrators later this week. Union officials on all sides say this latest round of contract squabbles with the city will, if nothing more, bring city employees closer together. It means somebody better start taking a, a long look at what's going on in this city government and uh, decide that it isn't just the PBA that they have problems with or it isn't just the firefighters or the machinists. They're having problems with all the city unions. Somebody better wake up. Rick Dawson, News 15. Meanwhile, members of the Fraternal Order of Police today began voting on their new contract. The FOP represents about 60 middle management police officers. The second round of voting is scheduled to get underway tonight at 8 o'clock. This afternoon's votes have been sealed until all the votes are tabulated. FOP Vice President Bruce Sorgan will not speculate on whether the contract will be ratified. Organized labor has come to the Noble County Sheriff's Department. The nine officers in the department will officially begin, officially join the Policemen's Benevolent Association tomorrow when they sign a charter with the union. The employees will seek collective bargaining with the county, but their first order of business will be to seek recognition from county officials. 113 workers at the Fort Wayne Wire Dye Company are striking against their employer. Members of the International Union of Electronic, Electrical, Technical, Salaried and Machine Workers are upset with the company's latest contract proposal. They say the package calls for unfair cuts in wages and benefits. The workers voted to go on strike Saturday. The walkout began when union members failed to report to their midnight shifts last night. No new talks are scheduled. The plant is located on the city's south side. The Fort Wayne School Board heard an update this afternoon on the status of teacher negotiations. School administration officials are now offering teachers a pay raise at or above the 6.1 percent raise suggested by a state appointed fact finder. But teacher representatives say there's a big catch. They have to be willing to negotiate part of next year's contract as well, the part that would make the school day 30 minutes longer. We've had four openers on the table since um, April of last year and Fort Wayne Community Schools has been unwilling to deal with three of those openers, yet they bring to us on Thursday night as a precondition to their proposal that we, we address ourselves to three or four or five new issues. It does not make sense to teachers when they are unwilling to address the four issues that are already on the table to add more to that list. It is not a subject uh, technically open this year, but either we're going to have to have enough money to pay for it uh, and reserve it this year, or we're going to have to know what it's going to cost so we'll know what we're going to have available. It all affects the 1985 budget. Fort Wayne Education Association is concerned about these new issues, and we indicated to Fort Wayne Community Schools that the minute we sign this contract and get this settlement taken care of, we'll be on our way to dealing with the new issues. We're both sides are meeting again Thursday afternoon. Coming up on News 15, a happy reunion to report from the Missing Children Network. And a push is underway at IPFW to bring computers into a new engineering program. Stay tuned. When you drive to Wendy's and order a single, you get more beef than the Whopper or the Big Mac. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, you never have to ask, where's the beef? Hi, I'm Bruce Griffin. You remember me. I gave you a cool deal last summer. Now I'll give you a hot deal. A dirty heating system breeds bacteria and causes higher fuel bills. For $59.95, we can eliminate that. We will power clean your furnace and entire duct system for $59.95 complete. 
Call us, 483-6683. If he puts his name on it, it's got to be right. <laughs> right, son? <laughs> right, Dad. When it comes to absorbency, Viva's more than a paper towel. Watch. To be precise, it's a paper sponge. It may sound incredible, but Viva absorbs as much as this sponge. So Viva can sponge up your sloppiest spills, sponge up your drippiest drips. Incredibly absorbent Viva, the paper towel that's really a paper sponge. Indiana Purdue University is petitioning to have a new degree made available at the Fort Wayne campus. News 15's Juanita Hayes says it should help education keep up with business demands. Of their Indiana Purdue's Fort Wayne campus hopes to bring a new engineering degree here by the fall of 1986 called Computer Integrated Manufacturing Technology, CIMT for short. The new degree will take students from this to this. From the drafting board world of school to the computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing world of business. It will cost the school a half million dollars in equipment alone, but officials say it will be worth it to offer students the most advanced degree possible. We've been lagging behind some of ourselves and not coming up with this program identifying the new areas that students are going to need to become involved with, proficient in. Industry has been pushing in this direction for some years now, going to the uh, computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. At Dana, where computer-aided design and manufacturing systems are already in place, officials say the new degree offering will help close an information gap that, if not bridged shortly, will leave the U.S. lagging far behind the competition. The demand for workers with the ability to use computers instead of drafting boards is currently being met by on-the-job training, but that is a costly and time-consuming option. And officials at plants like Dana, as well as IPFW officials, are hopeful that tomorrow's students will graduate ready to go to work immediately. All the employment uh, future for these kinds of graduates is, I think, right now unlimited. All industry is going in that direction. Companies like Dana, Magnavox, ITT, General Electric, General Motors would still need some on the job training, but hopefully, much less, they could provide an accelerated program to train them for their specific CAD equipment, which from one company to another might, might well be somewhat different. Some students are getting a head start on that training. Dana has found the best way to bridge the information and training gap of today is to train the college graduate of tomorrow right now. Juanita Hayes, News 15. Through the Missing Children's Network, we bring you information on youngsters who have been abducted. But in today's segment, we also have a success story. Children's Rights of Florida, a missing children network participating organization, reports the location and recovery of Vanessa Reeves, seen on a previous broadcast here on News 15. If you need help to locate a missing child, call the Missing Children Network at 1-800-235-3535. Four-year-old Michelle Marie Newton was abducted from Louisville, Kentucky, April 2nd of 1983. At that time, Michelle was 40 inches tall and weighed approximately 40 pounds. Her hair and eyes are brown. Leif Dougalby is now 16 years old. He was abducted in 1977 from San Jose, California with his younger brother. Leif has brown hair and brown eyes. This is Niles Dougalby. He is now 14 years old. Niles has blonde hair and brown eyes. 1-800-235-3535 is the number to call if you have information which may lead to the location of Michelle, Leif, or Niles. Your call to the network is always confidential. And later in the newscast, Jay Higgins will have a postscript to yesterday's Cubs-Padres game. But first, Maureen Ty will be here with a look at the weather. Stay with us. Cook Supermarket, and Lance's Supermarket, and Tom's Supermarket, and Lynn's Supermarkets have all teamed up with Super Value. And that means we can give you the best of both worlds. You get the friendly hometown service you'd expect from a locally owned grocer, and you get the savings that can come only from the buying power of over 2,200 supermarkets. Now think about it. More value for your dollar and friendly hometown service. That's why we're on the Super Value team. No one feeds a family like Super Value.
when you drive to Wendy's and order a single, you get more beef than the Whopper or the Big Mac. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, you never have to ask, where's the beef? Why do so many top cattlemen, dairymen, and pork producers rely on research-proven Kent feeds? Because of a secret ingredient no one else has. It's the Kent money-back guarantee. The guarantee sold me, but it's the performance that keeps me coming back. If Kent didn't make quality feeds, well, they couldn't guarantee him. And you can't argue with guaranteed performance. You ought to see your Kent dealer. The man with a guarantee. We make it right. It's more than a promise. It's a guarantee. Have we got the pasta. If you like pasta, you'll love Jean's all-natural pasta in 17 shapes and sizes. Now you can have a good time by making any of these delicious pasta dishes you want. It's the perfect dish for active people. Jean's pasta, the ultimate quick, nutritious meal. So easy to fix, low in calories and high in energy with that great home-style flavor. Try Jean's all-natural pasta at your deli or favorite food store. Well, I get a very pleasurable task tonight, welcoming two new faces to News 15. Unless you just tuned in, you've already met Ken Owen, our brand new anchor, and Maureen Tai is our new weathercaster. Welcome, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice Thank to have you, you here. Thank you. Yes. Of course, we've had a couple of cloudy days. Mm -hmm. uh, Anything I, better in store? Yeah, there is. I really wish I'd brought some sunshine with me. <laughs> it's not a very good way to start out a weather job with some clouds, but that's about all we've got. And we've got mostly cloudy skies at this hour, and that's about what we've been seeing all day long. Our current temperature now, 71 degrees. Relative humidity is 79 percent. Winds now from the south at 9 miles per hour. The barometer at 30.09 and falling. Taking a look across the area, you'll see that our state mostly has some clouds overhead with our temperatures very close together. We have a temperature of 71 degrees, as we mentioned, 69 degrees in South Bend, in Indianapolis, and down in Evansville. Our super satellite imagery shows that much of the nation has clouds with eastern half anyway. You can see clouds curling very tightly into a low pressure system that's now located over northern Illinois. This tight curl of clouds indicates the, the deepness of this low pressure and the, the strength of the storm associated with it. Out to the east they are seeing of course a good deal of rain activity as we saw yesterday and Ken mentioned that it rained all day yesterday with no escape but all that rain has definitely moved to the east and especially down over Texas, not exactly east but way down south where they're picking up some heavy thunderstorms there. That low pressure is still on its way to the northeast, moving very slowly. By tomorrow, we will keep the showers east of us. We'll be left with just a few clouds overhead, and after this evening, we should just about be able to say goodbye to the clouds and keep very moderate temperatures. Our high temperature today was 72 degrees. Our low this morning was 62. We measured 15 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. We'll check to see if there is any more rain in store for us when we come back. At Mayer Menswear, there's more to a good suit than meets the eye. Mayer can help you combine shirts, ties, accessories from Mayer's huge selection for a total look. Mayer knows you expect perfection, and that's the reason for Mayer's huge selection so you can find the cut, color, and quality to set your personality free. See the selection at Mayer. Choose your collection from Mayer's huge selection with successful results from Mayer. Hello, darling, I'm Conway Twitty, and if you like country music as much as I do, be sure and watch the Country Music Awards show Monday night at 8.30 right here on Channel 15. Despite all the rain and showers that we've had, we're not quite done with them yet. The forecast for this evening does call for a chance of showers this evening. After this evening, we should see those showers clear out. We'll be left with some clouds and even a real good chance for some fog tomorrow morning. If you're headed out early, do be alert to that because we could have some heavy fog tomorrow. The low temperature overnight should be about 58 degrees. For tomorrow, we are expecting variable cloudiness. The high temperature about 69 degrees. 
And then tomorrow night, again, variable cloudiness. The low then should be 54 degrees. And for Wednesday, well, perhaps a slight improvement, but not much. It's mostly cloudy skies with a high of 71 degrees. So we definitely have some clouds to look forward to, perhaps some sunshine near the end of the week. But mm -hmm. we'll just have to do with the clouds. But the right overnight now. lows aren't too cold. No, they're not. The temperatures, the clouds are nice in that way mm -hmm. because they act like a blanket. They keep us warm overnight. So there's a good point to the clouds. All right. Thank you, Maureen. With most banks and government offices closed in observance of Columbus Day, analysts were expecting Wall Street to slide today, and it did. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell four and one-half points, and losing stocks beat gainers on the big board eight to five. Merrill Lynch reports much the same story for stocks of local interest. Every stock in the survey recorded a loss today, with the exception of Dana, which went up. The Wayne TV WoWo Job Watch is a daily community service from News 15. Today, we have three more job opportunities to report. In LaGrange County, there's an opening for a maintenance supervisor for a 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. shift. You must have three to five years' experience as a supervisor or manager. This person will be responsible for nine day workers and three night workers who repair machines and buildings. To qualify, you must pass a physical and know hydraulics and electricity. Pay depends upon experience. In Steuben County, there's an opening for a nurse's aide to work second or third shift in a nursing home. This job pays $3.50 an hour. There's also a need for a production supervisor in Huntington County. You must have a BS degree and be able to supervise manufacturing and plan and schedule work. Pay ranges from $18,000 to $24,500 a year. For information about these and other job openings, contact the Indiana State Employment Service in Auburn or at 505 East Washington Street here in Fort Wayne. And Jay Higgins Sports is coming up next. The Panel Mart is more than just a paneling store. The Panel Mart is kitchens, beautiful new kitchens made of hickory, ash, cherry finish, oaks, and the European look. Panel Mart will plan your kitchen with you or for you. Panel Mart has large utility cabinets with pull-out racks, Lazy Susans, stained glass doors, utility garages, and many other features. And all this at surprisingly low prices. The Panel Mart, 4602 Lima Road for paneling and kitchen cabinets. Cheese, glorious cheese. So sumptuous and luscious. Cheese, marvelous cheese. Makes everything scrumptious. What else is so versatile? Real cheese is always a hit. It's cheese, marvelous cheese, versatile cheese, glorious cheese. Make your meal sing with real cheese. Designer Kevin Cooper of Adams and Walda. Most people like to browse first and then ask questions. I usually like to set up an appointment in a client's home to get a feel for their personal tastes. We are not a high-pressure organization. I don't push my personal taste on a client. My clients become more like friends than customers. Adams and Walda, for today's design-conscious homeowner. Let Gary Coleman entertain you on different strokes coming this fall on Channel 15. Jay Higgins is here now with a look at the sports and of course Padres fans very happy Cubs fans proud of their team that's right all of us here that were cheering for the Cubs are just I don't know I can't think of the word to describe our feelings right now but it uh, certainly isn't a positive feeling now, so near and yet so far oh that's that's right that's right uh, well, it's going to be the San Diego Padres, not the Chicago Cubs, who will represent the National League in the World Series that starts tomorrow. The Padres became the first National League team to come back from losing the first two games and win the pennant. Padre ace reliever Rich Gossage said the win over the Cubs put San Diego on the baseball map, and Steve Garvey explained how the club did it. This is no different than any of them, and I'm just a real, real proud to be a part of all these guys, man. It, just like today, this is the way we played all year, and everybody in the country is kind of wondering who the hell the Padres are, but I think they know us now. You know and this is, this is just the way, just like I said, this is the way we played all year. We played comeback baseball all year long, and, and uh, never count us out. We had to have good relief pitching. 
the Cubs game plan was was excellent. Get out ahead, take away the fan support. And then all of a sudden, about the fifth or sixth inning, the fans said, well, we've got to help make things happen. We've got to start to get this team up. And the fans, the 10th player, really started to work. We started to get a few guys on. Uh, we capitalized on a few mistakes, a bad hop, uh, two bad hops, one that stayed down, one that came up. And all of a sudden, we put together the rally that won it. We played against uh, what I feel is a is an excellent team in the Cubs. It could have gone either way. Uh, we made history by coming back, and I'm, I'm just proud of the, this team. While the Padres were celebrating in San Diego, the Cub fans were in a state of disbelief in Chicago. Many Cub fans, who were in ecstasy when their team had a three-run lead midway through yesterday's game, were predictably disappointed about the outcome. That's the spirit of the Cubs, you know? We like them no matter when they win or lose. We like them anyways. Next year. I hate to say that word, next year. But We've been saying it for 39 years. We can say it one more year. Last night's scheduled exhibition game between the Indiana Pacers and Detroit Pistons had to be canceled because condensation kept building up on the Coliseum floor. The condensation was caused by the ice surface beneath the basketball floor being laid for performances later this week by the Ice Capades and the Fort Wayne Comets training camp. NBF, NBA referee Paul Mihailak called the game shortly before the scheduled 7 o'clock start. Players then had time to sign autographs for the 4,500 that assembled. The game was to benefit the IPFW Athletic Scholarship Fund. At a news conference this afternoon, Kurt Patberg of IPFW FW explained how ticket holders can get a refund. The paper this morning will be available at the Coliseum ticket office Monday through Friday from 10 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Um, that's go that'll go from October 10th through October 31st. Coliseum manager Bob Tenbarge said parking refunds can be obtained by turning in your parking stop when you go for your ticket refund. The Indianapolis Colts lost the battle and the war yesterday in the Hoosier Dome. Not only did the Colts lose to the Washington Redskins 35-7, but all-pro offensive tackle Chris Hinton suffered a broken leg early in the contest that will sideline him for the rest of the season. Curtis Dickey, the Colts' leading rusher, was also injured in yesterday's game. He sustained a sprained knee. It was basically the Joe Theismann show. Theismann threw for uh, three of his four touchdown passes to Art Monk. This one good for 48 yards. Nice catch there in the corner. Another two Monk covered 16 yards as Theismann threw only three incompletions. Not too shabby. Yesterday at Chicago's Soldier Field, Walter Payton set a new NFL career rushing mark against the Saints with this carry just over the 25-yard line. Afterwards, Payton had some words about how he felt towards the record and to some of those who didn't get a chance to break it. The motivating drive for me has been for the athletes that have tried, but yet and still have failed to reach that certain achievement and also the athletes that uh, that didn't get an opportunity to like the Overstreets and the Delaney's and the Brian Piccolo's you know this simplifies what the game is made of and what I did out there today is a reflection of those guys because they made the sacrifices as well and it's a tribute to me to bestow this honor upon them. The Dallas Cowboys quarterback controversy has resurfaced. Head coach Tom Landry lifted starter Gary Hogaboom in the third quarter of yesterday's loss to St. Louis and replaced him with Danny White. Dallas lost that game 31 to 20. According to Landry, quote, right now Hogaboom's our quarterback for next week, but that doesn't mean I won't change something. The Cowboys take on the Washington Redskins next week for first place in the NFC East. That's a look at sports. Of course, the Cowboys and the Redskins, whenever they get together, it's always just absolute nuclear war on the football field about to be a great game and uh let me throw in my welcome to ken and you too maureen I've thank you jay it's gonna be a great time i know it. yeah it certainly to. is thank you jay and that is our report wheel of fortune is next we'll be back tonight at 10 o'clock with the news 15 night beat until then thanks for watching and have a good night Tomorrow afternoon on our magazine at 4 o'clock, meet Victoria Principal from Dallas. Now stay tuned for Wheel of Fortune next on Channel 15.
Did you know that Allen County Motors has been in business for 35 years and Indiana's largest Ford dealer for almost all that time? We did it the old-fashioned way. No high pressure, no hidden charges, just low price and acres and acres of cars and trucks in stock at all times. The plain fact is, you can't buy a new Ford car or truck for less than at Allen County Motors. Allen County Motors. We got to be one of America's largest Ford dealers by selling more for less. <laughs> You've worked hard for your money, so you don't want to take any chances. No more but with all the investment options available these days, how can you be sure you're getting the best return? That's why you should rely on the investment professionals at Lincoln National Bank. They're experts in all areas of investment, including flexible certificates, asset management, and retirement plans. You've worked hard for your money. So let the professionals at Lincoln show you how to make your money work hard for you. Channel 15 salutes National Employed the Handicapped Week.